Hey, what's up? I'm Stephen Mayu, and in this video, I'm going through uh, and wrapping up the, uh, the, the Markdown Previewer uh, Challenge at FreeCodeCamp.com. Actually, in this playlist, this is a series, and I'm going to tackle all of the React challenges at FreeCodeCamp.com. If you're doing the uh, data visualization certificate over there, pretty cool stuff. And um, in the last few videos, uh, we set up our environment. I explained the differences between functional and class-based components, and uh, and I showed you how to you know write out both using the ES6 um, new JavaScript syntax. Um, and right now we don't have much um, on the screen, but uh, but it is working. Whoops, that's the uh, that's the finished project. Uh, so right now we just have um, we just have some simple uh, JSX getting returned. Uh, we got our markdown where you can actually type. And uh, and nothing is wired up yet, but uh, eventually we're going to uh, put this uh, preview um, thingy right here, and it's going to like automatically update as we uh, type and and show us a preview. Uh, but anyway, let's um, let's see. Oh, one second, guys. My dog just ran out. I got to go get him, or he's going to get lost. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to be right back to get my dog. One second. Okay, guys. I'm back. I saved my dog. He's safe. Charlie's good. Charlie, thanks you for waiting. All right. So I uh, got my dog and uh, got my class-based component all figured out. Um, so let's just get down into it. Let's uh, let's wire up this uh, application so that it's all working nicely. Now, um, I'm going to need this concept of state in order to make my app work. And I need to initialize that uh, at the beginning uh, of my class. So whenever I make a new instance, um, we can initialize it with certain, you know, uh, properties or functionality, and we do that with uh, the constructor method. If you come from a programming language such as Ruby, well, uh, in Ruby you use the initialize definition inside of your classes. Same sort of concept happening right here. Uh, but if you don't know that, if that's all confusing and new to you, don't sweat it. Just remember, if you need to use state in a class-based component, do this right now. You need to write the constructor method, so constructor, and give it a, a, an argument of props, like that. Then we're going to write super props. So uh, remember, we are this class is inheriting some functionality from the React component library. So by writing uh, the super and then passing it in props, uh, we're just getting all that good stuff from that library. So that's very important. And now I am going to uh, write a, an object. I'm going to call it this.state. Okay. And it's an object, so we need the uh, curly braces. And I'm going to give it uh, one property. I'm going to call it markdown. And, uh, yeah, I need a colon. And I'm just going to make it an empty string to start off with. Okay, great. So, when you're working with forms and inputs and text boxes in a React application, there's a, a certain flow uh, to, to make this work. Okay? And you might see it differently, uh, you, know, you know, depending on, you know, where you're going. But this is how we're going to do it. All right, the value of our text area, and I'm gonna I'm gonna reference a JavaScript variable in a moment, so that's why I got the curly braces. But the value of our text area is going to be this dot state dot markdown. Okay, so this dot state is an object, and uh, and this is a property on that object, so we can access it by this dot state dot markdown. But when we change the text area and when we are typing, we need to update the state. So we're updating the state, and then the value of the state, it, uh, it gets here in the text area, okay? Because we're setting it, the value of the text area here. So for example, let me just show you uh, what this looks like. So Jello, I don't know why. Jello. All right, so you can see here I have my markdown. It says Jello. I cannot type anything else right there. 
All right, so uh, once I set a value for this text area and I, I give it some, you know, data, there it is, but, you know, I'm typing. You can hear me typing. I can't do anything. So that's not good. We want to be able to, you know, you know, make the text box work like it was, you know, before I added this value. So let's change this back. Okay, curly braces, this dot state dot markdown. And then we need another property on this text area. We're going to call it on change. On change. That means when we type into it, it's going to fire off this on change event. So on change, that's camel case, capital C. And we're going to need a helper function. Okay. We're going to need a helper function. And uh, we'll, we'll leave this uh, blank right now. We'll come back to it. Let's write our helper function. And we can call this helper function anything, but let's call this handle change. Okay. And this is coming from some, you know, element. And this is some, like, event that we're listening for. So we're going to give it an argument of event. All right. And now in this helper function, handle change, we are going to update the state. Now, you might be thinking, oh, okay, um, updating the value of an object. That's easy. You say this.state.markdown equals, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. Doesn't work like that in React. So in React, you need to call this.setState. Set state. And then you're going to pass it an object. And the state that we want to fix is a markdown. So markdown. And the value, all right, it's going to come from the event. So event. And the event argument right here, that represents an object. You see, anytime we make a change in the text area, it's going to emit some event object. And it's got lots of different properties. So we get the target and the value. And that will be whatever we put into here. Okay? So whatever we type into our text area, it's uh and whatever, you know, whenever it changes. Okay, then that's going to fire off some event that's represented. And the event is some object. We're going to call this.setState to update our state. And it's going to be equal to whatever is in, whatever we have written in this text area. So in order to access that event, which is the object we're passing in, target.value. And we can get all that good stuff. Okay, so... We just need to call this helper function every time, every time we make a change. Okay, so that's it. And this is a, a little tricky in ES6 and uh, React. I'm going to show you two different ways. One way, we can put in a fat arrow function directly in these curly braces. So put in a pair of empty parentheses with a fat arrow, and then I will say this handle change with uh, some parentheses. Right. And if I go down here, okay, it works. So again, our state, okay, our state has this one property, markdown. And our text box will always have the value of the current state, okay, of uh, the markdown state, all right? And we're setting the value right here. A value is always going to be this.state.markdown. But when we change something in the markdown, okay, on change, then we're going to fire off this handle change uh, helper method, and that will update the state. Okay, and we that's what we get right here. Okay. 
And now that I have that object available, that state object, well, now I can just put it down in here. I'm going to just uh, do a div and in between that I'm going to write this dot state dot markdown okay now let's see what happens wait uh-oh uh wait you got an issue here um, Okay, maybe I need to put it in a p tag. I think that's what I have to do. Let's just. Uh huh. Huh, that is interesting. Okay, guys, one second. I just need to do a little bit of quick debugging here. I'm going to unpause the video in just a moment. One second here. Okay, guys, I figured it out. It was just one little thing. Um, there are two different ways to. Um, to call a function, a helper function, in your on change. So one way I showed you, uh, the first one I showed you was this uh, fat error function. I just forgot to pump in the event right here, the event object. So if we you know call it event, okay, and then uh, right here in the preview, I have this header tag, and uh, I'm just going to display the current text of the markdown and. Uh, and you can see right here, I'm typing, I'm typing, and then there it is on the screen. Okay, in the next video, we're going to finally wrap this up, and then uh, I'm going to show you how to actually parse this into, um, into uh, HTML. Because as you can see, I'm doing like the tags right here, but it's not turning into HTML quite yet. Uh, so let's stop here. That's a good point, a uh, good place to stop, and I'll see you in the final video. Bye-bye. Boop.